The Sports Scouting Report with Lee Brookine. Brought to you by Medines Collision Center in Baton Rouge. Take control, choose Medines. Gross Savant Lodge, south of Lake Charles, the true sportsman's paradise. Treads and Care Company in Central, the tires you need, the service you want. Harvey Auto in Shreveport, Bossier City, the name you have trusted for years. And Gage in Baton Rouge, get better connected with Gage. Here's your host, Lieber King. Hi everyone, I'm Lieber King with the Sports Scouting Report. We've got, as always, we do our North Louisiana show once a week. And uh, I really like doing this. I really enjoy promoting North Louisiana. I've always traveled to North Louisiana. Um, today, we I'm really proud to bring on North Caddo's high school head coach in football, John Cavanaugh. John, thanks for joining us today. And Lee, glad to be with y'all. Really appreciate y'all bringing some, uh, some exposure to us up here in the North, man. We're going to be real because today is your day to do ACTs for North Louisiana and the state. And That's you right. took time. Uh, I think you told Jace from eight o'clock this morning till I think one o'clock y'all were doing ACT scores. What was that like as a, a coach slash administrator? To, to, oh, to yeah. All it's uh, the only thing different this year was they made the transition to where we're doing everything online now. So there's no more paper ACT that we're given here in the school. So that was a little bit of a transition, but it went pretty smoothly for us. We, um, you know, we just kind of prepared and got ready and it, it went as smoothly as you could have hoped. I would struggle doing that. And then again, I come from a different era, probably like you, Coach. Uh, I struggled testing. You know, I, I, I see these kids making 32s now, 23s, 17s, 18s. I had trouble making a 17 back in the day, but uh, I didn't test good. I didn't like the – I wasn't a good tester because of time. You know, right. It's out over the time. But I'm lucky. I've always been blessed. I've been a good tester. So I'm, There you I'm, go. That's why you're a good coach. Uh, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> But John Cavanaugh uh, is our guest from North Caddo. If you're from Baton Rouge watching this or you're from New Orleans or Lake Charles or Lafayette or the River Parishes or St. Tammany Parish, North Caddo's in Vivian, Louisiana, um, suburb of, La of, of Shreveport. And uh, Coach, explain what it's like coaching at North Caddo. It's a small town, but it's a very tight-knit community. Uh, and I'm gonna brag on you and your team later in the show, but tell everybody about what it's like to coach in, in Vivian. Man, it's great. I mean, it, it couldn't be better. It's, it all starts out with having uh, tremendous administrative support, which we do. Um, we're in a small community, like you said, Lee. We're we're five miles from Texas and about 20 miles from Arkansas. So that kind of tells everybody where we are up there in the uh, in the northwest corner of the state. Um, it is a small, tight knit community. We've got about 350 students here at North Caddo about 50 kids on the football team. Um, so, I mean, it's it's one of the things that, that is a great point of pride uh, for this community. And you know, we feel very supported and just um, just excited that that we get to be a part of something special. And that, that's what we're trying to do here. Coach, you're doing a good job of recruiting. 200-something, <laughs> that's a pretty good percentage. That's not bad. That's not Always bad. Always working. It's working, huh? Yeah. Uh, we got recruiting kids. Got boys in the school and about 50 of them play football. Not a, not a bad percentage. Uh, Coach, we're going to take a break. When we come back, I want to brag on you and the job you've done. And, and there's not a lot of history with playoffs prior to you being the head coach. I've watched your team, and, and we'll talk about it, Marion Miller, your commitment, stud football player at LSU. It seems like he's been playing there for 10 years. He's been such a good player for you. Yes, Reagan sir. told me about him two years ago, and when I watched him as a freshman, I was like, whoa whoa, this kid's got some unique stuff. I've seen them all come out of Shreveport, Morris Claiborne and Terrace Marshall and all the great ones that have come out of there, but he's got a chance to be one of the best ever, in my opinion. We'll let you brag on him as well. And, and the rest of your players, we're going to be right back. We'll have more of Coach John Cavanaugh, the head coach at North Caddo High School. We'll be right back. Listen, whatever you're driving right now, Tommy Harvey wants it. Bring it in to Harvey Subaru, Lexus of Shreveport, Bossier City, or John Harvey Toyota. They're paying big bucks for all trades right now. They'll cut you a check right there. Tell them Lee sent you. Welcome back. You're watching the Sports Scouting Report with Lee Burkeen. Um, Our preview magazine will be coming out late August. You'll see the shirt, Louisiana Football Magazine, started in 97 out of my apartment. 
And this will be 26 years, Coach. Uh, we got Coach John Cavanaugh on from North Caddo High School. Coach's team will be previewed pretty heavily this year. He's got some stud players coming back, some great high school kids. Uh, they've done a really great job there at Vivian. Uh, you know, everybody knows about – well, I say everybody, but if you're from the Shreveport area or Marion Miller, your stud receiver slash DB slash everything – Coach, I saw him on film two years ago, and you're one of your coaches, Reagan Smith, who's a great guy. He said, Lee, watch this guy. He said, I coached Trent Taylor at Evangel Christian. I coached Terrace Marshall and blah, blah, blah. And I'm thinking, okay, okay, and I'm watching him. And when the film was over, I sat back and I said, you know, he reminds me of no one else. He reminds me of uh, – of some of these stud receivers I've seen actually South Louisiana, like early do set them with LSU from St. Martinville. Um, he reminds me a little bit of Jamar Chase, has strong body, strong arms, strong hands. In person, he looks a lot like Jamar, honestly. That he kind of has that body build, you know, that, that look. strong receiver, you know, yeah. and and that receiver that when the ball's thrown to him, it's glue and what he can do after the the catch and what 200 almost 200 pounds now. But what do you think about this young man? And 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 when you when he came out, what was it like when he came out? That how long did it take to figure out he was different? Well, his his freshman year, um, he came in and we we were going to move him into the starting lineup week two. You know, as a as a freshman, which just doesn't happen very often. Um, the first rep of the first practice after we moved him into the starting lineup, he broke his hand. Mm. Uh, Lost the majority of his freshman year. We got him in late in district and got him a little bit of work and got him, you know, he put a few things on film. Um, you know, so he, we knew he, he, he looks special. He looks the part. Now he's probably gained 15 pounds, 20 pounds since then. So he's a, he's a much bigger kid and, and grown an inch or two. But the, uh, the skill set was always there. Uh, and then, of course, he just kind of blew up his sophomore year. Once we got his sophomore film out, um, yeah, the, the offers just kept coming. What is he now? I mean, you know, kids growing every day, but I, I had him at almost six two, almost two hundred pounds at the end of last year. That's exactly right. That's about where he is now. He hadn't gained much since then. I think you know, in all honesty, last year he played six one and a half, but I think he's a full six two now, and right there between one ninety five and two hundred. If he was six foot, he's to me special. It, the height, as you know, is overrated, but doesn't hurt to have some height. But, um. Who's coaching – I mean, excuse me, who's recruiting your school for LSU? I would think Joe Sloan, is that right? Well, Joe, um, Polian came oh, up and – okay, visited. okay. Saw him two or three weeks ago, four weeks ago. Real quick, um, at the beginning of this semester, he came up. So, I have, I hadn't seen Joe since he moved down to uh, to LSU. Um, but, yeah, it, they they recruited him hard and, and just stayed on him and made it very clear – that uh, he was one of them, and he was one they, – they wanted to uh, to make sure they held on to that he was important to them. Coach, i got to ask you this. Did did Mr. Saban make a, an appearance to your school for him yet? He, ha he has not yet. Um, I don't doubt that he will sometime this year, but I have not I have not seen him since he, uh, since he left LSU. That's the last time I saw Coach. I'd be shocked if he doesn't come by to try and pitch him still. Probably so. Who are some of the other schools that came by to talk to you about – about Miller, I'm sure a lot of big names. So you don't have to mention all of them, but there's a. Well, I mean, Coach Saban didn't come by from Alabama, but his wide receiver coach came by, um, Arkansas, Tennessee, West Virginia. Uh, I mean, all the local schools, of course. Um, Texas is uh, Brandon Harris got him to come down there for for a visit. I think that was last summer. Miami was one of the first schools that offered him. Mississippi State, you know. It's just he's one of those kids that he's going to be able to pick where he wants, and it, it feels to me like he's picked LSU. You know what? I hope he signs with LSU. I know South Louisiana people are jumping up going, yes, uh, because he'll be the next one. It's like wide receiver you now at LSU. And I want to mention this because you know this and I know this, but Brandon Harris went to Parkway, played for LSU, finished at North Carolina. People might not realize. I just want to make sure they realize it's that Brandon Harris. Yeah, it's that guy. It's that guy. You're a good <laughs> great, great personality. Good yeah. kid. I really think highly of him. I wish uh, maybe someday we can get him back in the state of Louisiana. I would love to see him coach in high school football. He, he, you know, and I love, like you said, coach to see him finish 
and go right into coaching D1 football. Right. And obviously that's going to be a, a, a thorn with LSU because he, you know, Texas is a very attractive place. And sure. being that he's a Louisiana guy, he's definitely going to be here recruiting a lot. Coach, you're going to take a break when we come back. I want to talk about your seniors this past year. I want to give them some sure. some love and credit and exposure and then get to your seniors coming up and talk about the program and your staff and your principal before we finish. And then uh, talk about some of those sports programs. I mean, y'all are small sure. schools. Compete on y'all. There's some history there with basketball at your school too. And y'all oh, have no. a basketball player playing right now in the NBA. I want to mention yeah. that. Too. Uh, we'll be back uh, in just a moment with more of Coach John Cavanaugh from North Caddo High School. If you need a paint job or repairs to your vehicle, go see Medine's Collision Center located in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, on Kincaid Avenue. The number to call is three five seven. 7983. That's 357-7983. Your Baton Rouge Accident Advisors. Welcome back. You're listening to the Sports Scouting Report. I'm your host, Lee Burkeen. Our coach today is John Cavanaugh. And before I forget, Coach, because this is a new world for me, but I want everybody to see if they will like. Is that how you say it, Jace? Like, follow uh, us on YouTube, uh, Twitter our LouisianaFootballMagazine.com uh, website. And just so Coach knows this, our show yesterday, especially LSU fans, we had the 1958 National Championship All-SEC Offensive Guard coach on our show, Lynn LeBlanc. That's like cool. Billy Cannon. Yeah. How do you like that? That's pretty cool. So check that show out. And we had a six-foot-five lineman from Denham Springs, 280, Tyler Kimball, who has a 4.3 GPA and a 32 ACT, class of 223. And we had a trainer on, uh, which is Deanna Malonsaw, talking about – it was Coach, it's National Trainer Month. Did Didn't you know that? Yeah, so we're talking about trainers and how some schools don't have trainers. Speaking of that, before we get into your uh, players, but how important are those trainers, Coach, to, for you at practice scrimmages games? Well, what we do, we don't have professional trainers that come out to us. So we, that's just not something that's available up here in Vivian. But what we do, we end up having um, we end up having girls that go through the first aid program and and learn different things, and then they come out and help us uh, on the sidelines. So they're huge. They're really big. They're really big. Gotta have trainers got to have them. And, Absolutely, no and, doubt. And like we say, there's no clock for a coach. There's no clock for them. You know, hours wise, it could be 12 hours to work a three hour event. Um, last year, you had a special group. I watched uh, you, these kids for a few years: Zion King, uh, Christian Hill, Demarcus Williams, Control Potter. You had two big O linemen: Michael Heflin and Wynn Robinson. And That's you had a late bloomer, Tavantius Hodge, um, who signed with. Uh, in Chicago, NAI school. I didn't know that. You had told Jason. And Henderson State picked up. Wynn is a sleeper, huh, Coach? Wins can play. He's got good feet. Yeah, I mean, he kind of snuck up on everybody this year. Huge kid, 6'5", 305 pounds. I think he's probably up to about 315 right now, playing baseball for us. So he's a, you know. Baseball. He's a left tackle, but that tells you he's got some athletic ability. You know, he's a, wow. he's a left pitcher and plays some first base and DHs for, the, for our baseball team up here. So, I mean, athletic kid. It's going to be fun to see how he develops at Henderson State. They jumped all over him. There were a bunch of bunch of schools that kind of got on got on him late, um, but he he was locked in with Henderson State and went ahead and signed with them. Uh, just proud of him, you know. He's he's a kid who worked hard uh, over the last summer, got his body in shape, and then just um, you know had had more opportunities than I think he even realized he was going to have. And um, just proud of him. He 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 did good things. That's what I don't like about early commitments, coach, because right. like that. They didn't evaluate him early, as you know. Right. He has a great senior year, and all of a sudden he's as good as most of the guys that committed early. Absolutely. Um, but the good thing is, in the end, he got a scholarship, and that's what matters. Uh, Coach, um, what do you think of your staff? And great guys. Uh, I've met Reagan Smith, who's on your staff. Met him. I met him at a coach's convention in San Antonio years ago. Wow. And he's wow. very knowledgeable as a tech guy. You know that. He knows oh. the internet. Ooh. He know he knows his, his computers and his tech and is is tremendously helpful there. He's you know he's creative as an offensive coordinator. Um, he's one of those guys you know, and I feel like I have a staff full of these guys that couldn't live without football. 
you know, that it's just they eat, sleep and breathe it. Um, we, we, you know, we had a staff meeting yesterday and I don't, I don't know how many staffs are game planning and scheming in the middle of March, but that's just it's second nature to us. We just we just enjoy getting together and, and being around each other and talking football and getting on the whiteboard, bouncing ideas off of us. So, yeah, Reagan's fantastic, um, has done a tremendous job with our offense. Um, he, he put together a package for Javon Tavius Hodge. He talked about earlier that went to a side with Judson um, for him to play quarterback. And also we flexed him out as a tight end. Some real big kid, um, 6'3", 240 pounds, um, you know, kind of used him in, a, I guess you would say, a Cam Newton type of role. We ran him a lot, big body that could run over people. Um, but then we, we, had, um, we had the opportunity to flex him out, which was good. It lets, we let schools see him. Um, as what he might be more apt to do in college, which was play, play a uh, H-back, flexed out tight end, you know, even an inline tight end. He could, he could do any of it. So uh, Coach Smith did a fantastic job molding his, uh, you know, our, our game to his skill set when we realized he was going to be our quarterback most of the time. Just a fantastic job, and, that, and that's no surprise. I mean, that's, that's just what Reagan does. You know, he, he puts, um, puts guys in positions to be successful. And uh, rather than rather than making everyone adapt to his scheme, he's going to adapt to the players that we have on ham and make them make them successful. My oh, defense, yeah. my defensive coordinator is fantastic too. Um, Chase Thompson, who came to us, uh, he was a GA at Northwestern in Natchitoches before he came here and and uh, worked as a defensive back coach for us for a year. And then uh, our defensive coordinator position opened up, and he has done a tremendous job. Real creative young mind, just always learning. Fits in perfectly with our kids. They love him. Um, it's just, you know, those guys that are smart and are hard workers, I mean, they're, they're invaluable. I mean, you, you, you can't put a price tag on what somebody like that is, is, uh, worth to you. And for me to have an offensive coordinator and a defensive coordinator, and honestly, a special teams coordinator, coach Lewis Dennis does the exact same thing. We're just junkies. You know, we're football junkies that love, that love the game. Kind of five, uh, coach, to you on that. That's a, <laughs> I mean, you know, people say you got to love it to stay in it, right? I mean, right. You're not, we're not making, you know, millions of dollars to put in 80, 80 hours a week, whether it's my side of it, your coaching side of it, teaching, you teach. Absolutely. You guys teach. People forget they teach and coach. Uh, okay. I want to take, I want to, and I'll, before we take a break, I thought of Reagan Smith when I was watching the Super Bowl and I was watching Trent Taylor return mm -hmm. punts for the Bengals from Evangel Christian, and he coached him at Evangel Christian. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll have more of Coach John Cavanaugh. I want to brag on his upcoming players for the 223 season. Be sure to take your car and truck for all your tire needs to Treads and Care Tire Company located in Central. The number to call is 331-8144. Family owned and operated since 1971. That's Treads and Care Tire Company. Welcome back. You're listening to the Sports Scouting Report with Lee Burkeen. Uh, our coach today is John Cavanaugh at North Caddo High School. If you're not from Bossier City, Shreveport, Natchitoches, Houghton, um, Menden, Vivian, Louisiana, Co like Coach said, not even five miles from Texas. Absolutely. So what, just tell them the Texas town nearest you. What's that, what would that be? Called? All right. Jefferson, Texas is right across the border. Probably the, the – I don't know that any, anybody would recognize that one or not, but it's the biggest town right there across the border from us. Okay. And then you've got several little Texas towns that are close to Logansport and some of those other schools sure. up north Louisiana. Uh, Hemp Hill, Texas, I know is one where I think uh, Wilkerson played from LSU, all SEC center, played for the Falcons. Coach, talk about football in Shreveport uh, in general. The, the the schedule you play is just enormously packed with talent teams. Um, people don't realize the amount of talent in 1A, 2A, 3A, 4A. Sure. Everybody looks at 5A, but it's tremendous talent in that area. I mean, even when you cross over to Monroe area, I mean, it, you're, you're taking on a big-time team every week. Oh, there's no question. You know, we play, we play some – the way it's worked out this year, every team we play is going to be above our class in, in pre-district. So we'll play three, four, or five A teams for all of our pre-district games. We're traveling over to Neville to play them in Monroe. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah, that'll be a good one. On North Webster, where Devin White came from. Coach John Ware up there has a great program. So we'll play them. Yeah. West Washita, who's a five A school. We're going to travel oh, over. Yeah. 
I mean, we – we're, we got a, a schedule that's going to let our guys shine this year and play play against some talent, let some people see what they've got going on. So, And then, of course, once we get into district, we got Calvary Baptist. We'll play in district. Um, Loyola, college prep here in Shreveport, that's going to be a good challenge for us. Green Oaks, which is where uh, Dakota's Crawford played last year. I mean, that – Davis White, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Sure, Davis White. Um, you know, so, yeah, the Shreveport area is packed with talent, and it's uh, – you know, it's it's a blessing to have good competition because what that does, it gets you better, and then it gets your kids exposure. You know, our kids um, get to play in front of a lot of a lot of football coaches, a lot of scouts, and a lot of eyes on them. So it's good, it's real good. And when you get to the playoffs, you might catch a break. Absolutely, Absolutely. <laughs> no question about that. I mean, even Northwood, you look at their schedule. Uh, people don't really, you know, I'm talking about Northwood and Shreveport, not Northwood and Lena. Sure. Uh, it's just wow. You look at the teams they play, and you look at Menden and Houghton and Benton. I mean, and they're all talent. All of those teams, as you great. know. And the thing about it is, there's not. It's not just great talent here, but the coaching. The level of coaching in Shreveport Bozier is phenomenal. Um, just, just tremendous. It's a battle. You're not going to have any games where um, you're going to take advantage of somebody big time. You know, that's it. It just doesn't happen. There's the coaching around here is too good, too high of a level. Homer, Logan support. I mean, we just go on and on and yeah. on. We, we actually beat Homer last year here, last second play, and they went on to win a state championship, you know. So, yeah, there's there's some good football teams around here. And let's not forget Haynesville. <laughs> Haynesville. Yeah. Nope. We're going to take a break. We come back. I want to talk about the upcoming players that are coming back for Coach Cavanaugh, guys that have gotten experience. A lot of key. Some of these guys are three-year starters coming up. Um, K.J. Black, the Rodney Thomas, this is the world, Aiden Brock, Gianni uh, Black, uh, Sean Tenney, a lot of good players coming back. I'm going to ask Coach about his kids, and you might have a couple of guys playing quarterback uh, as of now, and, and that's something that's worked for you in the past. We'll, we're going to be yeah. right back with Coach John Cavanaugh. Savon Lodge, the true sportsman's paradise. Gross Savon Lodge has fresh and saltwater fishing, alligator hunting, waterfowl hunting, and echo tours located south of Lake Charles, Louisiana. Give them a call at 337-598-2357. That number to call again is 337-598-2357 and have the time of your life. Welcome back. You're listening to the Sports Scouting Report, watching the Sports Scouting Report again. Also, if you want to follow me for some reason, I don't know why you would follow me on Twitter. I mean, we're I just got Twitter a week ago, Coach, personally. Wow. Yeah, I'm learning. I'm <laughs> Late, huh? <laughs> follow me at it's very easy at Lee Burkeen. There you go. You can't spell Burkeen, it's B R E C H E E N. And make sure to follow North Caddo High School. Uh, keep up with them, they're the Titans and uh, John Cavanaugh and their staff. Coach, your team coming back. I'd mentioned Aiden Brock, I mentioned obviously Marion Miller, who's your, your star on at receiver DB. KJ Black's a big time player. Rodney Thomas, it seems like he's been playing forever. Sean Tenney on the O-line. Gianni Black, uh, Philippi Sanders, Antonio Nelson, uh, Cortez Gibson, uh, Mason Jackson, and a, and a new name uh, you had given, uh, Jay Straquay Vincent. Yeah, Jaquay uh, Vincent. yeah play, came out and played football for us last year and was, was phenomenal. Um, and we expect big things out of him. Uh, outside linebacker. Maybe safety, you know, he's kind of a tweener there, and then play some wide receiver. Maybe even might even end up playing some quarterback for us. What? Like, how do you how do you like the two quarterback system? It's worked for you. It's worked for us, and you know, with the um, with the offense we've run recently, and really, you know, for the last five or six years, um, it takes some of the fear out of running the quarterback. Um, so that always gives you, you know, if you can run your quarterback, you can get a plus one in the box because they've got to account for that quarterback, you know. It's just something we always like to do. So I, I like the two two. And last year, honestly, we had a three quarterback system that played and that took us to the quarterfinals. You know, so I mean, not afraid to do it at all. Now, if we got a superstar, yeah, he'll take every rep. Um, you'd be crazy not to. But if if the talent is equal and we've got athletes and different skill sets that we can use and and different packages that we can put in for different young men, we're absolutely going to do it. Again, the thought process being mold your team to your athletes not your athletes to, to the coach, you know, to your, to yours. Coach Cavanaugh, and, and that's interesting because 
I bet you every defensive coordinator has to be a junkie to try and beat you because they got to study for three different playbooks. We, yeah, we like to think so. I mean, we like to think it makes it difficult. You can't just sit on, you know, uh, you know there's teams that do just run zone and uh, it's the only run play you got to worry about. Uh, but not, I mean, not us. We're not, we're not going to sit and just have one thing that we can do. I just, I don't like the thought of that. I don't like the thought of if you stop my one thing, well, then I got nothing else to turn to. Yeah. Yeah, um, you know what else I like about your offense, Coach? What's that? that y'all use multiple running backs, and you interchange your linebackers to run the ball. Absolutely. You bring a lot of power, and Absolutely. you also have a lot of skill. So they don't know if a 220 kid's going to run the ball that just played linebacker for you. That's or right. A 160 guy run outside. And so I'm not sleeping at night if I'm playing you guys. I mean, and then you got Marion Miller on the edge at two right. pounds. Well, when you have a kid like that, you know, he almost requires a double team, you know. So even whether whether you're spread, which we are a lot of the time, or whether we're in our pro eye stuff, um, we're going to we're going to be multiple and we're going to make you account for him. And then we've got K.J. Black in the backfield who's going to scare a lot of people. He's got a lot of offers, too. And, and is another really talented kid uh, that'll be a senior this year. Now, the name is escaping me, but you're going to know it. But two years ago. You lined out a linebacker as a flanker, and I think he was about six foot two forty. You remember yeah. that kid? And he looked like he, he was smooth. I mean, smooth yeah. to be. And yeah. I was watching the film. And I'm like, this guy can actually run and catch. Absolutely. And you had him out flanked out now, not as a tight end, but you had him flanked out as a flanker. He's gotten even bigger, Lee. He's over at uh, Kilgore Junior College, oh. and uh, I'd say he's probably two sixty five now, but still has that. <laughs> They're probably gonna. I, I guess they're probably gonna end up putting him at defensive end. You know, a, a, a you know out to four three defensive end type of body, yeah. and just let him go get the quarterback because he's he's special. Trey, That's Trey Hurd. Trey, yeah, Trey. I mean, if I am Polian of LSU, if I'm Louisiana Tech and their new coaches, I am sleeping at that school to recruit that kid. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I've never seen a guy two forty two fifty as a flanker. And I'm not talking project if you're listening and watching the show, but coach, I mean, I I've watched a lot of football, but that kid ran routes like a split end for you. Sure. Really? And good hands. I mean, I was like, whoa. Absolutely. Whoa. And block, man. You talk about put somebody on the rear end out there on the edge and, and set that edge for you on, on your jet sweep or or blocking for your quick screen game. Yeah, he was he was nasty. Coach, this is his second year at Kilgore coming up. This will be his second year. He was a free He'll be ready to sign this year. Well, he, yep, yeah, he could. Um, he, he registered this year, so he's still going to have four years. He's going to have four years to play left. So he could spend one more year at Kilgore, and then uh, and then he'd have three years to play, you know, wherever. Or, you know, he's going he's gonna to go do something special. Yeah, he's a great player. Um, really excited for him. Coach, any final thoughts about the school? I know basketball – Y'all have a kid named Williams for the Celtics, who's not not bad. Went to AM, six foot eight, what, 260? Looks like he's 200 pounds. Oh, he's bigger than six eight. He, he's closer to seven. Yeah. He's he's special too. Yeah. He ended up went went to AM for two years and is kind of growing into his own in the NBA now. He's starting to shine. Um, and I honestly think he has all star potential. I mean, he's really, he's really doing special things. He actually, good story, Lee. He he, uh, we were going to a playoff game in De Quincey this year, second round down in De Quincey. And I just kind of put the message out to the community, hey, it'd be nice if y'all kind of chipped in and helped me pay for some charter buses to get yeah. us to Quincy. Well, Robert fit the whole bill. He just paid it. He just sent me a check. Robert Williams, come on. Just just take care of it, Coach. I got you. So, um, man, it's great to have alumni like that and guys who care about it. He does a lot of stuff like that. He comes back to the community and puts on, um, you know, bitty ball clinics and – and uh, all kind of stuff. He just – he has not forgotten where he came from. I'm, I'm proud of that kid. I remember when LSU went up against him, you could not stop Robert. I mean, Robert just took right. over. He was either 20 rebounds and 20 points and about 10 blocks. He was incredible. Yeah, his um, senior year here at North Caddo, he carried us to the finals. I mean, it, it, he just sat in the middle and just swatted away everything that came in there close. He was – he's he's always something special. We actually uh, retired his jersey about a month ago. Coach, I want to mention this, and I, to appreciate what you do as a coach and other coaches, but you mentioned travel. When you do a playoff game, and let's say it's four hours away, like De Quincey or three and a half, or four and a half to New Orleans or five, you got to feed these kids on the way to the game. Well, and, and on the way back, I mean, you're going you to – And you got to get them there. You're going to get them there. You're going to feed them twice. You're going to make sure they got somewhere to stretch their legs. You know, you're right. not – 
a playoff day, you're not going to drive three hours, get off the bus and play. You kind of got to make a full day out of it. You might end up feeding them three times, Lee. We, uh, for that DeQuincy game, we stopped at uh, Corwin Aldridge's place, uh, Mama's, down on front. Oh, yeah, Mama's. Yeah, nice. Had some hamburgers and drank some Gatorade there. And, uh, you know, so that kind of broke up the trip for us about halfway and got to visit with him some. So that was that was good. That was a good day and uh, successful for us. Well, they must have special parking for you with the bus. He actually, they they don't have a lot of parking over there, so they took uh, care of him. He, he took care of us. He pulled. He let us pull in the alley behind his place. So, he, yeah, he, he helped us out. Or if you saw Doug Ireland, he could take you to the Louisiana Hall of Fame if y'all had time. Yeah, right down the street. That's right. Usually you don't have time. You got enough time to eat and – we yeah. made it of it, yeah. And just it's one thing you want to do for a playoff game. You don't want to rush. You know, you, what I do is I just uh, t- basically map out every minute. You know, you, your principal is going to always want a, a uh, an agenda. Where are you going to be at this time? If I need you at this time, where are you going? And that's great, and I don't mind. And that actually makes things easier. Coach Cavanaugh, uh, anybody you want to do a shout out to that's been a part of your life to get you where you are, or people that helped you along the way in coaching, or anybody you want to mention? And just a lot of – I've got a lot of family members who are coaches that really made a big difference in my life. Um, you know, I, I never got to meet my great-grandfather, but he's Joe I. That's who Louisiana Tech football stadium is named I didn't know after. that. Yeah. Wow. That's a big, that's big – tells me all the time that I remind him a lot of Joe I. They were, just have a lot of similarities in our style and nature and just how we deal with people, um, and that's a huge compliment to me. My Uncle Mark was a longtime coach down at Dutchtown, Mark Cavanaugh, who I, yeah. I kind of was always – impressed with him and and just he he taught me a lot and then i mean my grandfather was a longtime coach in shreveport uh jimmy harrison uh was also a tennis coach after he retired from coaching football but just i've got a lot of family influences that have kind of just pushed me in the right direction i I would be remiss if i didn't mention jerry bird that that guy got me into coaching um however many years ago it was um uh, i was a businessman first before I got into to teaching and, and coaching. And he taught me into coming out and coaching with him on his staff and I'll always be appreciative of that. Um, Chuck Dupree helped me out a lot. I worked for him. He was I took over for him when he retired here at North Caddo, and he was a big influence on me and, and helped kind of guide me and just mold me and just kind of prepare me for what was ahead. You don't really understand what it's like to be a head coach until you step into it, but you can try to prepare, and that's what he did. He tried to get me ready for some of those things. And I'll always be appreciative of that. Give a shout out to your family. I know you had uh, one of your kids actually almost got on the uh, yeah. podcast a minute ago. So he's headed to a tennis match. Um, that's my daughter Lauren that y'all that y'all saw earlier. Um, she's a junior here at North Caddo, a cheerleader, soccer player, uh, tennis player. Um, I've got an older daughter Madison who's at LSU. Um, okay, is in the opera program down at LSU. Super talented um, and just successful just really proud of her and then my wife lisa has been with me forever you know we're just um you know i I could have accomplished none of the things that i have um without her support and love she's always my biggest fan and takes care of me and just handles things you know there's there's so many things that people don't understand how much a coach sometimes misses out on um but when you've got a wife that just handles it you know it's um it's a blessing and i'm truly blessed um and then, I mean, I'm, I'm grateful for the people up here at school. You know, we talked about my coaching staff already, but a program is not successful without the support of your administration. And Ms. Annie Cherry has, has supported me fully, and it's, it's a huge part of the success we've had here at North Caddo. And, Coach, if you heard of me, yeah, i got an office cat, my cat. Oh, awesome. He's like, I guess he's talking football in cat terms. You know, I don't know what he's saying, but, yeah, if you hear a little kitty cat, 18 years, Shug. I got him uh, at a football game, actually. Uh, uh, 20 degrees, about almost 18 years ago. Uh, was a kitten at a game, and I said, I do not want a cat. And the cat was starving, and I think the coaches were picking him up, the coaching wives. I said, no, we don't want it, we don't want it. I said, uh, let's put that cat in the car. I'm going to take it. Let's quit filming. Let's go back home. And 18 years later, I got this kitty cat. Yep. So, it's, it's all football related, uh, but I appreciate you taking the time to be with us. And you're doing a tremendous job. I'm just letting you know that from the outside, watching what you're doing. Um, you deserve to get this out statewide. I'm glad we were able to get you on today. Lee, I appreciate y'all, man. I always enjoy visiting with with people who take care of us and who um, who invest in our kids, you know, in our football in this state. It's, uh, it's really cool to get to visit with y'all.
let me let you get back to work. I know school's still in session. Thanks, Coach. Gage has served Louisiana for over 40 years. Let Gage create a custom-tailored solution for your business and become your partner in technology. Give them a call today at 225-753-4243 and help your business get better connected with Gage. Thanks for listening to the Sports Scouting Report podcast with Lee Brookings.